You know, by this point in my life, I've learned to question a lot of things, some big things, some small things. For instance, today I started to question, how the hell did it get to be September already? Seriously, I mean, wasn't July just here a minute ago? I mean, really, what the fu- Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So, bargain bag, am I right? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, the September edition of Bargain Bag, uh, trying to keep uh, through the end of the year, keep with my uh, expectation, my, my, my hope of bringing you the bargain bag videos at the beginning of the year, of the month, instead of at the end of the month. It uh, frees up some time during list season at the end of uh, in the second half of December. So, wish me continued luck in this endeavor. Uh, but yes, Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of a mystery CD grab bag cobbled together from the bargain wall at Epic Seconds, a store in downtown Eugene. Yes, just a few more months of Bargain Bag left. October, October, November, December. So yeah, the cl the clock is ticking ticking down. Uh, bargain bag will be no more uh, by the end of this year, at least as we know it. Um, I, whoop, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the uh, table there. Um, I am not ruling out the possibility of getting one of those great big. I, I see people on YouTube every once in a while opening one of these things, uh, one of those big 100 CD mystery boxes. Uh, I guess uh, there's uh, some stores out in the Midwest called uh, what's it, Vintage Stock. I guess Vintage Stock uh, sells them. And I was at a Vintage, vintage Stock uh, early this year. No, last year. It was over a year ago now. Um, and I forgot to look to see if they had those anyway. Uh, it would have been a pain to ship home anyway. But uh, so, yeah. I might once a year buy one of those things if I get the chance to. Uh, people sell them on eBay also. Just boxes of CDs, random CDs they throw together. So... Bargain Bag could resurface in that respect. In that case, it would be, could be called Bargain Box, wouldn't it? Uh, so, yeah. But as of the form it's in now, yes, Bargain Bag will be ending at the end of December. Uh, so, yes, I'm going to go through the CDs that were in la that I unbagged last month. And after that, uh, I will open up the new bag uh, right here on camera and see what's in there. So, uh, Yes, in rough order of from cast-offs to keepers, let's go ahead and check out last month's bag. And uh, I guess last month's video could have been called Meh Bag, because it was just a big old bag of meh, for the most part. Uh, there were a couple of couple of winners in here, as you'll see. But uh, yes, let's go ahead and get through the, the meh titles. Easton Corbin, a uh, country singer. Uh, I, I do like the fact that he has a a cute little doggy on the cover here. But uh, as for the song stylings, you know, country... He's not bad at what he does. It's just very... I just found it very, very ordinary. I uh, just... It wasn't my cup of tea. And the same thing with Frankie Ballard. Uh, except he doesn't have a dog on the cover of his album. So that that's uh, one one point uh, less than uh, Easton Corbin gets, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah. Uh, country is still... Country is not a... I'm going to love whatever I listen to in the genre. Well, no genre is really, but... I, I'm a little pickier about my country than I am about most other genres. That's what I'm trying to say. So, uh, yeah. Uh, other people, other country fans may like uh, Easton Corbin and uh, Frankie Ballard. Unfortunately, I didn't find a whole lot worth um, worth keeping the CDs. And, yeah, same thing goes with uh, this artist. Damone, Damone, I guess, is the name of the band. They are a uh, um, emo alt... Uh, not alt metal. I don't think they're not quite metal, but... Uh, yeah, one of those, uh, they would, this album was released on Island Records, but it's almost like they might have well have been released on Fueled with Ramen. That kind of sound, basically. Emo punk pop. That, that's what I was trying to say. Not metal, punk pop. So, yeah, you might like it. I didn't care much for it. Again, they're not bad at what they do, just, eh. And uh, this one I was kind of hoping to like, but I uh, unfortunately uh, just uh, didn't really float my boat. Uh, Plena Libre is the name of the group, I think, and Mas Libre is <clears throat> the name of the album. Uh, Latin music, obviously, as, you, as uh, you can tell by the title. Yeah, it was okay. 
uh, yeah, just not uh, not worth keeping, unfortunately. And this one is another one that I kind of I wished I had liked, uh, and because this was a pretty pretty big album actually back in its day, uh, Feist with her album The Reminder. Was this her debut? I can't remember exactly, but uh, unfortunately, and um, female pop artists of a certain kind, uh, I have trouble getting into, like the, uh, well, the ones like Feist. I mean, I like, um, oh, Elizabeth and the Catapult. I tried to like Florence and the Machine, but uh, she just hasn't been, hasn't been able to stick with me. Uh, and same thing with Feist. Not, not that I'm saying that they're the same subgenre of female art pop, folk pop stuff, but uh, they had the same effect on me, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, then we've got some um, classical stuff. Uh, Prokofiev's Greatest Hits. This one was okay. I might keep it uh, because it's got a, uh, a suite, an 18-minute suite from Peter and the Wolf, which is something I've always loved since I was a kid. Uh, so yeah, I might keep that. And it's got um, one of his symphonies in here and a couple of other pieces as well. So yeah, I may keep this one. I, I do like to... I've been trying ever since I can rem remember, really, when, I th when I'm in the mood to. That's, that's the other real catch is when I'm in the mood to. I have been trying to expand my classical, my classical ear um, over the years. So, But these last two are definitely keepers. Uh, this one, Kelly Sweet. She is a um, kind of a jazz pop uh, vocalist. Very, very good. I, I some, For some reason, something uh, with her clicked with me uh, when I was listening to it. Uh, she actually does a cover of Dream On by Aerosmith, which is pretty good. And I, that's, I think that's the only cover that she does. But uh, yeah, very, very good stuff. Um, and I just I just noticed here it's produced by Mark Portman, and I believe a uh, member of the Rippington Ripping uh, blah, blah. Mark Portman. It, I don't know if it's the same Mark Portman was a member of the Rippingtons, a favorite jazz group of mine, for a while. So yeah. Anyway, could be a t totally different Mark Portman, but he produced it. But uh, yeah, very good. She's got a nice voice. Uh, great. Um, sonic palette in a lot of the songs, so I really enjoyed this one. So yes, uh, a keeper. And this was her debut album, by the way. And if I remember correctly, when I looked at her looked her up on Wikipedia and stuff, she goes by a different name now. I think she only went by the name Kelly Sweet for her debut album. So you kind of have to do a little bit of digging to really dig up a lot of information on her, so uh, be that as it may. And the other keeper... And incidentally, these last two are basically just tie are pretty much tied for the winner winner chicken dinner of the uh, of the month. Schindler's List, the soundtrack by John Williams, my man John Williams, and uh, this one kind of ties into. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about it because I don't want to uh, spoil anything. But uh, a series, a little mini series of videos that's coming up on my channel, hopefully by the end of September. Probably not until the end of October. I, I definitely want to try and do it by the end of this year. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to... Anyway, I'm not going to spoil it. But yes, this ties into that. So I'm really glad that I uh, unbagged this CD. And before I unbagged it, though, I was kind of germinating up the idea for the video. So this is kind of a half happy coincidence that I unbagged the CD at this time. But uh, yes, if you have not seen the movie, it is a very powerful movie. You kind of need to see it. But just just be ready for a very um, intense and uh, heart wrenching movie. But the score is absolutely fantastic. I mean, uh, the theme is one of John Williams' biggest uh, big hits. You know, in such a way that a film score composer has hits. But it was one of one of his most popular compositions. Just the violin in that is just I don't know how so much emotion can come out of an inanimate object like a musical instrument. But, th but then, in a way, musical instruments aren't inanimate objects, because when somebody plays them, they they come to life, basically. So, I don't know, I my own personal opinion on that. But uh, yes, the, uh, the soundtrack, particularly the theme from Schindler's List, is amazingly moving. Uh, I, at very least, get a little misty-eyed whenever I hear it. 
So and it's just yeah, it's just so, such a moving theme. And I, I believe it was Itzhak Perlman, the uh, renowned violin. Yes, violin of solos by Itzhak Perlman. He did the violin in this uh, soundtrack. So it's which, which makes it you know needless to say, if he does the violin, it's absolutely amazing. So uh, anyway, enough rambling on about John Williams. I could ramble on about him for hours. But anyway, let's go ahead and pop. Oh, let me get a drink first. And again, sorry for uh, juggling the uh, table. It's actually a large uh, TV tray, fold-up TV tray that my uh, tablet sits on. I, I record on my tablet. Uh, so every anytime I move it at all, it's going to bounce like that. Apologies. Anyway, let's go ahead and tear into this bargain bag the third to last. Fourth to last, something like that. If if my counter was working today, it would I'd be able to tell you for sure. Off with its head. And now put the scissors out of the way so I don't hurt myself with them. So let's take a look. Oh, I can I can see that one of them is a two disc set. I uh, don't know what it is though because. All I see are the spines, but you can see the uh, this little part here in the middle. That's an indication that, that it's a two-disc set. So anyway, I am still waiting to un unbag Play by Moby, so it may be in this bag. Let's see. We have, oh, Sawyer Brown, his greatest hits. I I've, know I've, I've heard the name Sawyer Brown before, so uh, can't say I know who they are or what they do, but uh, it'll be interesting to hear. I always look forward to listening to anything I get out of a bargain bag, which is one reason why I'm going to miss it after the end of this year. Next up we have Lush with their album Love Life. I don't know who Lush are. I, I, I'm, I'm sure I've heard of them, uh, but I guess we will. Oh, Papa San is, one of the name, is the name of one of the tracks. Tra La La is the name of another track. And then there's another song called The Child Catcher. So, yeah. The Child Catcher and Lady Killers is another track. So. Uh, think of that what you will. Anyway, we have... Oh, Brief Carolina. I've heard of these guys. Uh, it's Classy, Not Classic is the name of the album. Ten songs. And I'm sure I've heard of these guys, too. I want to say they're a rock band. Um, the wind is blowing a little bit. Next up we have, oh, The Streets. This is, I believe, uh, Hip Hop. Uh, the Hardest Way to Make an Easy Living is the name of this album. So, yeah. I was not into hip hop when The Streets kind of came up and did his thing, uh, you know, made a name for himself. But with a uh, slightly, very slowly growing appreciation for hip hop, Maybe maybe he will click with me this time. And then next next up we have ah oh the Matt's Morgan Band. Heat beats live. Apparently it's a live album. Ah oh and I guess this is a uh, two disc set also. No, it's not. But it says. It says there's a DVD in there, but there is no DVD. So, uh, but yeah, it's a it's a live album. So I don't know who the Mott's Morgan Band is, but I will find out. And you will find out next month. Then we have, who Kinky. Anyway, <clears throat> and that's what it's called, Kinky. Oh, it looks like it's uh, Latin, a uh, Spanish language band, because uh, several of the song titles, but not all of them, are in Spanish, apparently. Noche de Toxinas is one of them. Ejercicio number 16. Oh, Ejercicio number 16 in Spanish. That's the name of that song. And uh, so, yeah. We'll, we'll see how the kinky stuff 
uh, reacts with me. Sorry, bad joke. Anyway, uh, oh, Nat King Cole, A Christmas for Kids. That'll be cool. Oh, for kids from 1 to 92. So I like Nat King Cole, and so I'm sure I will enjoy this one. And although, actually, I won't be listening to this one until after Thanksgiving, because that's when I start listening to my holiday CDs. And the last CD, which is supposed to be a two-disc set, is oh, Lilith Fair. I have never had a Lilith Fair CD before, so... Oh, yeah, Paula Cole, Indigo Girls, The Cardigans, Lisa Loeb, Susanna Hoff, Suzanne Vega. I've come to uh, enjoy a lot of the artists... <coughs> that are on this, so uh, I will probably enjoy this double disc CD. So, yeah. Well, how about that, ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, and everybody in between. So, yeah. So, that was a nice little assortment of CDs for, well, this month's bargain bag or next month's bargain bag, depending on how you look at it. But anyway, that'll do it for this video. Uh, be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and click my username to browse my past videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.